So this is not really a um, tutorial video as such. I'm just going to go through a project and just show some of the new 99 panel features that I've used to um, upgrade my panels basically and make them a lot more efficient and um, a lot nicer to view as well. So this is an old project of mine. Uh, if I go to the top level actually you can see uh, the entire panel layout. So this is, um, it's essentially a an adaptable um, panel system for media server that I've been building. Um, I, up here I've got one, two, three, and four, so you can kind of split panes. Um, it's very slow on this computer because it's a really old AMD card, and then as I drag, the user interface will kind of update itself and so on. So it has things like sets, feeds, nodes, sections. Uh, you can bring your projectors up and it brings up parameters for those. Uh, this is the old timeline, which was a bit nasty. Uh, it kind of works, but it's kind of really heavy. So this whole system got a bit heavy, so I decided um, in 99 now as a new panel system that maybe it was time to kind of rebuild this whole thing. Um, not rebuild the systems in the back end, more just rebuild the user interface. So I decided to um, move on from these kind of panels where I was essentially saying set the width and height through an expression, go inside, set everything through expressions, set the, uh, if I go inside, um, sorry, if I go inside a panel rather than a, um, so let's say in the, uh, yeah, that stage, um, into the project settings, for example, I'm setting the X and Y through expressions, I'm setting this width through expression, this width, they're all through expressions. So this is really not, a good way of working because expressions in Python are very slow. And so what I thought was, well, let's see what we can do with a new system and just see how much quicker we can make it. So, um, I mean, when it's not cooking, it's all good, but when you start really using this in anger, things can get pretty grim. So I'm just gonna quit this out and open up this one. So this is the new system and the new system uses a new UI. Uh, uh, so I've got at the moment I've just got the timeline. Um, if I actually open up the full thing rather than just the timeline, you can see I have pretty much all the things I had before, um, except for some reason I've delete. I've managed to lose my menu, which is in here because I've done something stupid. I think I've oh yeah I've got a rogue container over here. Um, cool. So if I uh, open this up. In here I've got this timeline, um, I've got this stage, so this is the same stage as the old system. Um, it's got a few projectors kind of sitting willy-nilly in there at the moment. This is kind of still being built. So I've got some stage bits and bobs here which, getting, which I'm building. Um, and then there's the same database thing which hasn't really changed. But the most important one is uh, this little panel here and uh, these panels which are now not using any references at all really. Um, so it's quite cool to just show through how that's worked in the new version. So now that we have, um, in fact, if I go into my UI kit here, now that we have these, um, this new layout uh, rearrangement, we've now got an extra few uh, parameters. And the most important ones are these horizontal mode, these ones here, horizontal mode and vertical mode. And if you can hear scratching, that's my dog in the background. Um, and if I go into, for example, the integer panel here, I've got the width parameters grayed out because I set the horizontal mode to fill. And what fill means is it's just saying, take my parent and set my width to be the same as a parent. So that's really handy for, if we have fluid layouts, we can now actually just set that to, to fill. In this particular one, I set a fixed height of 20 pixels, but if I wanted it to fill the whole parent, then I could just set it to fill as well. So the good thing about this is that if I go inside, is that now I've got these, you know, normally in the past, what we would do is we would say, um, we could go to children and say line left to right. And we would have to set all of these widths to be the parent divided by however many objects there are inside. So I've got four objects, so this would be in an old version of touch, it would probably be a fixed width, and it would be something like me.parent.par.w divided by four, and that would give us our width. So I'm just gonna set that back. 
Now, however, if we set it to anchors, then we can actually use these anchors to set the proportions ourselves. So this one in particular actually says for the right anchor, so for the fit right, 0 0.5 is the center of the panel, the parent panel. So I'm saying take this panel here and make it from the far left of the parent panel to the center of the parent panel. And then you get this, um, this kind of halfway point here where this panel finishes. I'm then saying these are smaller, so I'm just saying I'll oh, make them like tenth of the panel above. And I'm saying make the next one maybe a little bit less of the panel, uh, a little bit more. Sorry, so that's 0.6, 0.9, and then we've got another tenth at the very far right, and it gives us this parameter window that looks a little bit like this. So this is the size. We've got our little arrows. We've got our field in the middle, uh, and that all works quite nicely until I error it somehow because I've got it setting the dat value and there is no dat so that'll be why. Uh, so I've got my, obviously I've also got my um, my little bits and bobs here for controlling this panel so. And inside here now there is one slight thing that hasn't quite been updated and it's a little bit weird is that tops now inside these um, components have to have a width and a height because if you don't have a width and a height of the parent, then there's no way of saying fill, fill and making it full screen. You have to actually set it specifically in the top. So in the olden days, what you would do is you'd have a top and you would probably do, if you were doing it through exports and you would have a parameter chop and your parameter chop would be the parents built in and it would be um, the width and height. And a width and height would be 150 by 20 and I would say okay cool so that's great I'm gonna export this to here I'm gonna export this to here and you would be done um, and then when we go back up you'd see that when I open up my grid size uh, not this I open up my integer then things look okay kind of but you can see that this is actually a little bit stretched and the reason it's a little bit stretched is because the new system in the new system the parameter chop the width and height of the panel above, which is the um, this one here, are now grayed out and are 120. But the problem is my panel itself is not 150 wide and it's not 20 high. It's actually 200 wide and 20 high because the new uh, anchor system is overriding the width and the height. So from now on, you can't really use this. You have to now use the panel chop instead. And you use the panel chops screen width and screen height parameters, and we can export those uh, into here. And you'll see that we now have, when I open up my integer, a panel that works at the correct size. So that's kind of how you would go about making uh, fluid panels these days, just by using these these um, these fills. There's also a weight. I'm not sure what the weight does, but. Um, I haven't really tried it out too much yet, but I'm sure it's got some use. Um, and there's also the origin and post offsets are really useful. So I'm using post offsets somewhere, somewhere inside my timeline. I'm not quite sure where. Um, if I go inside layers, it's possibly this layers box component. Yes, I am. Ah, so this is a post offset which is being used to um, for my layer scroller. So if I go back up and open this up, I have this. Uh, scroll bar at the bottom for scrolling along my timeline. So this is quite long at the moment. The timeline's 10,000 frames long. So that's gonna kind of, you know, allow me to scroll along that timeline. So that's kind of um, uh, working quite nicely by using the offset parameter to just kind of offset those uh, layers. Then inside that, that so that's just the post offset. And then inside that, what I've got, I've got a little bit of sort of traditional thinking going on in the layers box because I use, I generate layers by um, setting their height, and then the layers themselves actually do have um, static Y parameters because uh, they are rearrangeable and so on, and they're draggable. So if I set my children to align top to bottom then actually my layers, I wouldn't be able to drag them around freely. It would lock it off. So at the moment I can go in, I can say, oh, okay, make layer two. Actually, I want layer two to start here. And then if I play, it'll start there. And actually maybe layer two 
uh, should have a much shorter time span so I can, re I can resize that to whatever I want and that works but um, actually so in here now that's going to finish when the um, when it hits the end of that layer um, but the problem with that is that if I start aligning top to bottom then I can't do those things because for some reason it overrides um, all those parameters so I'm using a little bit of traditional thinking still with this but I'm not using references I'm doing everything in the replicator uh, which is much better um, and that means that this entire panel now, there's still some references in there, but this entire panel now runs and it's cooking at 0.08 probably because I'm using this screen recording software. Normally it's like 0.01 and I think the only thing that's actually cooking still is this uh, frame parameter which I can probably fix. So it's actually not cooking at all. Um, when, when I play the timeline obviously these things, this is the, the heaviest cooks are this line here this frame counter here, this little scrub bar. So in high performance mode, I'm going to turn those things off so you don't know where you are on the timeline, but when I get the section editor in there and you know what section you're in, it won't really matter. So that's kind of all to do with, um, so there's eight milliseconds. That's playing back video as well. So playing the video in the timeline is about three. So that's kind of how you would, um, make your panels much more efficient now, now that we're in 99. Um, which is quite fun. Um, there is also, while I'm in this, because it's a bit of, it's a bit of fun, um, I've also got this timeline which is um, using uh, some really crazy, um, really crazy kind of logic to try and build itself. So each layer, for example, and this is not to do with 99, this is more to do with just fun and games. Um, this layer here has, uh, this table, sorry, has all these values that are representative of things that might happen in a layer. So brightness, contrast, everything else. Now in the old system, what I used to do was composite um, the videos and then I'd have a level top and then I'd have a, um, I still got one level top here actually, which is for like the real time level stuff. But um, I used to have like a level top and then I had an HSV adjust and then I had a, you know, a whole bunch of different tops down here, which were doing um, all this compositing. Whereas now, if I put it, I've put it all into a table, and what I do is I essentially use this script here to, uh, and it's a pretty brutal looking script, to um, build a GLSL shader from the, from the timeline itself. So it just builds it from this DAP. And it turns up, it eventually it ends up with something that looks a little bit like this. You know, you've got like all your, all the bits that I, I have like my, my functions for blending and all the rest of it and doing my corner pinning and levels and all that kind of stuff's all in here. And then the actual logic for doing the layers is in this section, which is procedural. And then at the very bottom we have just the footer, which is literally just the, uh, the extra um, curly brace. And then that all merges together into a big shader. And then we just have one composite that does everything. And what it does as well is um, in the um, in the layers themselves, you can, the, this, this, this um, section here, the reason we have multiple windows because we have multiple layer groups. So I can say, if I want this group to have two layers and I want both those layers to be kind of composited, this one's gonna multiply, um, then I can do that through this layer group and I've still got this layer group to go to a different output or a different um, surface or whatever I'm going to attach it to. We'll have a different movie file, so you can send all that out. And what that happens with that is that all goes straight through the same, the same GLSL top does all of that, but it just does it in different color buffers, which is limiting in that on this card, I can only have eight um, layer groups. But I can't think of any situation where I'd need more than eight surfaces, not even in our bigger D3 shows where we would have that situation. So it's kind of good fun, you know, that this is quite a cool way of, you know, doing your compositing. There's probably a little bit of a hit when it recompiles the shader, but ultimately when I'm working with this timeline anyway, this is not intended for real-time use. My real-time use will be uh, when I put a tox in here and when the tox goes in, it'll kind of, uh, ooh, helps if I go back to top level when my tox goes in, it'll kind of have a layer panel here and this will be where all my real-time stuff happens. The timeline's more for just um, queuing up shows, making sure that everything runs in time on the show, 
uh, changing things in real time will happen in this panel. So we like a different separated thing. Um, the cook time is crazy on here right now as well for some reason, but I think that's my screen recording. <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of like how you can get things to run uh, a lot faster. You can't physically see it running faster, annoyingly, because of the um, because of this screen capture, but it is running so much quicker now with uh, this new layout system. So it's really cool and uh, totally worth checking out. So if you have like an old panel, uh, VJ system, whatever that you want to upgrade, I would recommend yeah upgrading because it's uh, it's going to make your shows a lot quicker. Um, and that's about it. So enjoy.